Microsoft launched .NET Core as a cross-platform framework in 2016, which means we can host our .NET applications not only on Windows, but also on Linux. It's understandable that .NET developers would initially choose IIS on a Windows server to host their web apps, especially those who have a long history with .NET framework, but, the, uh, but in the era of .NET 7 and .NET 8, you should know how to deploy to Linux. Hello, I am Mehdi, an experienced .NET developer. In this video, we're going to deploy a simple ASP.NET web app to a Linux server. Well, it is much simpler than most people think. Additionally, there are many logical reasons to move to a Linux server these days, especially when we consider server costs. We are going to use Ubuntu 22.04, which is the latest long-term support version at the moment. But theoretically, you can use other distributions as well. Uh, and also, we will use Nginx as a web server. Here also, you can use Apache or any other Linux-based web servers too. If you just want to test and do not have an Ubuntu server yet, you can use the free services from AUS EC2, Azure, DigitalOcean, or any other service provider to create a totally free or very low cost Linux virtual machine. Uh, even a single CPU with 2 GB of RAM uh, would do. I haven't tried it yet, but maybe even 1 GB of RAM uh, would also be enough. But in this video, I have installed it on a VM and I'm gonna access it via SSH protocol. Okay, let's start installing .NET modules on Linux. First of all, let's update the apt-get. Now let's install .NET SDK for .NET 7 with apt-get. Oh, uh, I think I should put the point zero here, yeah. So uh, now let's install uh, .NET Runtime. So uh, because we have already installed .NET SDK, .NET Runtime is already installed on the server. Finally, for .NET modules, we need to install ASP.NET Core Runtime. Now we can use this command to check if the installation was successful. We can see that version 7.0.9 uh, is, uh, is successfully installed on the server. So uh, it's time to install Nginx just like uh, what we've done uh, Recently, use sudo uh, apt-get install nginx and uh, we're done. Now we can do just one thing here to make sure that the uh, server is up and running. Let's uh, check the 
IP address of the server. This is the welcome page of Nginx showing that what we've done so far was all right. Now, to forward requests to our app, we need to configure Nginx as a reverse proxy. So, uh, we need to edit the configuration file, which is located at a specific location. I have included this command with that address in the Nugget repository. The address of the repository is mentioned under this video. There are multiple tutorials about Nano on the internet. You can refer to them to learn uh, Nano more. After opening this file, you need us to move down to this line, which is defining the location. Here, we need to paste some configuration lines here. Uh, I have included these lines in the repo too. Uh, we can also use Alt, Shift, and Closing Breaks uh, shortcut to make it a little bit more beautiful. So now it's time to save it. The configuration file for the reverse proxy has been edited and now Nginx is ready to play its role in our Linux server. Now I'm going to create a very simple ASP.NET web application for .NET 7. That's okay, so let's select .NET 7 and it would be created. The point here is that you need to change uh, what we have here at the launch setting. The Kestrel server would work here to serve our ASP.NET page, and we will use the Nginx as a reverse proxy to show what we have on the Linux server. Just change the port here. Here you can change it to 5000. Uh, also, I can change the HTTPS configurations, but as long as I'm not going to configure HTTPS on the server, I will leave it alone. Just mention that the port should be the same as the server on the service. Now let's uh, start publishing the uh, application, choose a folder publishing, and uh, just browse for a uh, folder that uh, is okay for you and click finish. And now just click publish so the web application would be uh, compiled and the published files would be generated. Now we need to create a folder under this address and also give the required permission to the user so we can put the publish files there. Let's make a directory here called app. And also we are going to use a command that would give the required permission to the user. Also, I'm going to use the ch own command of the Linux to change the owner of the folder that we have just created. Now you need something to transfer the published files to the server. I'm using SCP protocol with WinSCP, which is a free application available on the internet. Just uh, put the host address here and select the SCP from the dropdown and enter the credentials here and log into the server. So we can check if we can copy the files to the folder that we've just create, created under the www uh, folder, but we're getting this error. It means that we have not given the required permissions uh, to the user. So let's uh, turn back to the command line and uh, enter this command. Now just check that if it works now, just mention that I have moved to the publish folder. That's the right folder to work with. Yeah, it's working now. Another thing that we can do is to check if the a web application at Kestrel level is doing fine. We can run here this command sudo net 
and let's type the application name here. It is Linux Web App Test. Linux Web App Test dot PLL. Excuse me. So we should first move to the folder that uh, we have copied the published version. Let's type city or www and also app. Okay. Now we can run. So it's showing that the server is running perfectly. But if you have installed the Linux just like me on a VM with user interface, you can check it yourself by going to the user interface here. Voila, that's the page that we expected to be shown here. One thing that I forgot to say is that you should disable the HTTPS redirection here at the program.cs uh, because we are not going to use the HTTPS. So uh, don't forget to comment this line out. Now we need to create a service for the web application that we created previously. We will use Nano here again and uh, let's open it. I have paid some lines of code here. Just replace these names with the ones for your web application. Okay, now we need to enable the service by putting this command sudo system ctl enable Linux web app test that service. Okay, the service has been enabled and we will start it. Just replace the enable with start. So service should be up and running now. So if we want to see the output from our web app, we need to restart the Nginx. Now everything should be up and running. So just put the address to the address bar and we have the output of the application here.